Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to explain what rating is, what titles are, how many points you need for certain titles, what FIDE is, what uh, norms are, all of these things, I'm going to explain them as well as I can. So let's go. First of all, rating is a number that you get when you start playing chess, and if you win a game, it goes up, if you lose a game, it goes down, obviously, and once you get to certain amount of points, or certain, certain number, you get you start getting titles. But first things first, sorry, if you're rated up in between zero and a thousand rating points, you're known as a novice. Clarifying, or I should clarify that this is not a title, this is just a category for you. This is known is a known term for you if you're around this rating. You probably just learned the rules of the game, you might still make illegal moves, and most people in this category are still playing for fun, which is absolutely fine. Then we have class D, your rating is in between 1000 and 1400, you're usually still a beginner, um, but you're beginning to understand a little bit more strategy, and um, you, you, you're you not castling very often, you're, you're, your king is in the middle, I don't know what is it, you should castle as soon as possible because you're going to get checkmated. Then we have class C, once again it's getting a little better little by little, um, which means that your rating is in between 1400 and 1600, you're considered to be a club player officially. Maybe not a strong one, but still a club player. You've probably played tournaments, and this is the level known to be achievable for the average human. Whether you work, whether you have, you you're a parent and you you need to take care of child or something like that. This is achievable for the average person. Now, without sacrificing too much. Now, we're gonna get a little bit a little bit more serious with class B. Your rating is in between 1,600 and 1,800. You start understanding tactics. You probably figured out that chess itself. Is by nature pretty tactical um you've you've solved chess puzzles and you've dipped your finger into the very big ocean of opening theory and um that metaphor referred to opening theory itself and how big it is so you probably started studying openings and you realize that you will never know everything because let's say fail like no one knows everything about opening theory it's such a big big world and then we have class a which is the last class before we start moving into a little bit more serious things. Class A, your rating is between 1,800 and 2,000. You're a strong club player. You've spent a serious amount of time in chess and you castle pretty quickly. You, f you figured out that if you leave your king in the middle, you're going to get checkmated. So you castle pretty quickly. The last category before we start talking about titles is expert. Your rating, FIDE rating, by the way, the International Chess Federation, is in between 2,000 and 2,200. You're now a strong, consistent player. You... By definition, you, you beat the previous categories we already talked about, but once you're an expert, you start really feeling the strength because you're 2000, and you once you get to that milestone from 2000 to 2200, you're definitely above any other categories. Um, you're a potential title holder, and you start understanding positional play. Now, this is where it gets exciting. Um, this is all mentioning, or everything I've mentioned is... FIDE rating, which is the International Chess Federation. Now, that st same federation awards titles to players that perform very well. The first title is CM. This is the one I own. If you look below in my camera, it says CM. I'm a candidate master. That's what it stands for, which means that my rating is in between 2200 and 2300. This is officially the first title. It's the weakest title, um, and it means that you've spent quite a lot of time in chess. And I would like to believe that we don't blunder that much. The third highest title is FM, FIDE Master. Your rating is in between 2300 and 2400. You perform at a very high level, you've played lots of chess, and if you're an FM, you're, you're, you're pretty admired by the chess community. We're going to move on to the last two. Uh, this is IM, International Master, the second highest title. Your rating is in between 2,400 and 2,500. You're known as an experienced professional, which means that you can probably make start making chess a living. You get paid very often by playing tournaments. So that's a very big achievement. And you're highly talented. Now, in order to get this title, you need something called norms. You need three norms. David, what, are, what is a norm? A norm is pretty much, in a nutshell, performing very well in a tournament so you have to score a certain amount of points you have to beat certain players and once you have a very good tournament they give you a piece of paper which is a norm once you have three pieces of paper 
you you have three norms and once you get to 2400 then you become an international master david what happens if i'm 2400 and i don't i don't have three norms i only have two you're not you don't get awarded international master you need three it, it's the same the other way around actually if you have three norms but your rating is 2340 then you're you're not international master sorry <laughs> that was embarrassing okay and then we have the highest title uh, excluding world champion which of course um, which is Grandmaster. Your rating is in between 2500 and 2700, you will see why. You're the strongest kind of player, you're prestigious among the chess world, you're respected, you're admired, you're the boss, and um, you also need three norms to become a Grandmaster, so it means that you have to perform even better than than for the, the IM norms. You need, need to perform better for GM norms. So you have to play three tournaments and do very, very well in each of them. And of course, get to 2,500 rating. Now, this is the last official uh, title, and you would think that this is where the video ends. But actually, there's an official, an unofficial term, sorry, and uh, that is uh, is known among the chess community, and I wanted to share it here, which is Super Grandmaster. Once you get to 2,700 plus, um, there are no more official titles being awarded. But among the chess community, you're known as a Super GM. Um, there are many, li there are very little people in this category uh, you're part of the elite your 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 life is around chess and you're likely to be financially stable which is something a little bit more uh positive without without uh we should not forget sorry that computers are still around computers are estimated to have a 3000 plus rating in fact the very famous engine which is free you can access it stockfish uh, is estimated to be rated around 3600 uh feeder rating so that's inhumane this is amazing no human has ever achieved this the highest uh human to ever achieve uh or the highest human got to 2882 which was magnus carlson and that's nothing compared to computers computers easily beat human players um but in the bright side th this is accessible for the public so we can use it as a tool now you probably thought david you forgot about about a very important part of titles and i didn't i just left it to the end because I thought that was the best way to optimize this presentation. So, in chess, you have the equivalent of the normal titles um, for female titles. In order to encourage more women, it's not a secret that chess has been male-dominated for a while, and now things are changing. So, in the same way you have candidate master, a woman can achieve a candidate master title, but on top of that, uh, females or, or women get the extra option, the, the additional option of, of being awarded a, a female uh, uh, title a woman title so you if you're a woman you get the extra chance of getting wcm if you get to 2000 wfm woman fide master 2100 woman international master 2200 woman grandmaster 2300 and that's it it's a note uh, and that that's important now before we end this video i know that you're probably tired and you want to get rid of me but i did not mention national master which is the title you're seeing right now and the reason why I didn't do that is because it depends on which country you live in or which country you play chess for. Um, in the same way, there's FIDE rating. There's also national rating. So, for instance, I'm, uh, I was playing for Mexico, right? So, I have international... I played international tournaments within Mexico, but there are also national rated tournaments inside Mexico. So, those two rating or those two uh, rankings are different. If... If your country awards national master titles, which is not the case for every country, then you have to consult that with your country, depending on where you live, of course. And that will be it. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. And thanks for watching. Have a nice day.